I'm Dr. Dougherty. I'm the director of Central Academy. And I'm standing today in front of this artwork done by students. It was a collaborative effort, and I think it really illustrates some of the work that we need to do uh, together when we're talking about multiple opportunities for learning. Because like this painting, there are many right ways to be successful. Um, two of our big improvement plan goals center around how we communicate student progress to the students and to each other and to the parents. Uh, we want students to accurately estimate their level of achievement according to a scale. What happens often is when students come down here, they start comparing themselves to other students and that can be very destructive. We would like them to compare themselves to the standards that we set so they're always kind of getting a realistic idea about how they're progressing in our classes. Now, Central Academy is a little different than the home schools because most of our classes are unique to Central Academy, which means when it comes to writing topics and scales, we have to create those uh, with one or two people working on them together instead of having a team from across the district to, to write them. So it takes us a little bit longer and we have not fully adopted SRG topics and scales for every class, but we're almost there. Most of our classes use the SRG topics and scale. One important thing to think about when we're talking about courses at Central Academy is that some of our courses are content-based courses, which means uh, what I learn in, in the first unit or the first module or the first part of the semester uh, can be foundational for what comes next. But we may not come back and visit that exact same concept throughout the entire semester. Having that in your, in your background and your knowledge is important, but as you progress, you're learning new content all the time. A great example of this is in physics. You might start out with forces and kinematics, and then you might progress later into momentum and energy exchange. Um, other classes at Central Academy are skills-based, uh, which means usually they have the same topics not only first semester and second semester, but year after year. So we're just developing our ability with those particular topics and deepening our skills and getting better at doing those things. And so today in this video, you're going to hear from each of our departments and they'll tell you whether or not they're a content-based scale or a skills-based scale because it does make a difference in how we assess students and how we give multiple opportunities for learning. What's really important is that we keep our focus forward moving in our learning plan. Um, in, the, in an accelerated class, there isn't a lot of time to go back and keep redoing and retaking and reviewing. Instead, we need to fold those opportunities going forward, keeping our gaze up ahead so that we learn from what we, where we came from, we learn from our previous uh, efforts and our previous practices, but we're constantly evolving and working that in as we go forward. And so each of our uh, groups, each of our departments will talk a little bit about how they fold that in. Now sometimes they'll talk about cycle one and cycle two. So let me kind of explain a little bit about what that means. In cycle one, what we're talking about is uh, the initial learning, the first time through that material. But what we do is we fold in previous learning sometimes with the new learning because it builds on itself. And so what will happen is you might go through the uh, learning cycle, you might go through and, and learn the new idea and get an opportunity to demonstrate that and get some feedback so that you can refine your practice. That's all cycle one. Sometimes during cycle one, we'll introduce that another new idea with some of the previous. So you've got this idea, you're almost finished with it, we're gonna bring in a new idea to deepen that understanding. So, in, so you can get ongoing spiraling learning through that first learning cycle. Sometimes kids need to go through cycle two. In cycle two, which can happen midway through the unit, at the end of the unit, uh, anywhere along the spectrum, depending upon how the class operates. The cycle two learning is when students can reassess for material that went before. It's not new material, it's previously learned material that maybe they just want to get better at or demonstrate a deeper understanding. Now, whenever possible, because we were talking about accelerated classes, we try to incorporate those opportunities right along as we move forward. However, sometimes students need to request to get into a level two cycle. And so when that happens, 
um, the student has an opportunity to demonstrate. Sometimes that could be an end of chapter review, sometimes that could be an end of chapter test, or it could be a midterm, it could be a writing assignment, it could be a unique assignment made just for that student, it could be a conversation with the teacher. I've also seen it, for example, when a student is writing an essay on a test, for example, or giving uh, showing their work on a, on a problem, and they demonstrate earlier learning that they didn't quite have mastered before, but now they do. That could be constituted as a second cycle, the learning cycle too. Our focus really has to be on moving forward and keeping that forward motion uh, so that students do not get behind. Because what will happen is if they put it off or, or delay entering that first cycle, then what will happen is they will uh, struggle later because the learning plan is designed to build on itself. So if you don't start with us, uh, you may have a hard time keeping up with where we are in the class. So it's important that students don't put off and say, well, I'll just do that test later, or I will just do that paper another time, or I'll just do the next paper. That could really put you at a disadvantage. So we want students to be timely with their work, and we want them to participate fully in the assignments that we give. There's some other terminology that's kind of different for parents to understand too, and that's uh, learning topics and learning targets. Um, when we talk about a topic, it is an entire set of concepts or skills that we're trying to develop in the student. And so there could be many different little pieces of learning that have to take place in order to really understand the entire topic. This is why we can't put up a topic score until a little bit later into the semester. Usually the first month or six weeks is when we're starting to post topic scores. Because if you have three uh, topics in the semester, uh, they're designed to last for the semester. So if we put on a topic score too soon, it can create a little bit of a panic because you're like, wow, I didn't quite understand all that yet. But you're not expected to that early in the semester. So we'll put evidence of learning the things that students are working on and how they're progressing uh, towards that topic. But the topic itself usually comes a little bit later. So then the question becomes, how do I know where I am, or how, does my, how do I as a parent know where my child is in their progress in classes? Um, certainly by conferences, we'll have at least one uh, topic score evaluated, uh, may not be posted, and then by midterm, we'll definitely have to start posting our grades. After the midterm, we start to post more regularly and more often. So one thing that we're going to do differently this year is that in November, December, and January, before the end of the first semester, I will push out to you, parents, a progress report with all of your students' progress in every class. Uh, it will list it as a grade, as if that's where they were if the semester were to end at that point. That way, you'll know that this is the latest uh, information, this is the most updated uh, grade, and you have an opportunity to work with the teacher to figure out what are we going to do if an intervention is necessary. Also, it will help us be a little bit clearer because when everybody's doing it at a different time, it's hard to tell. When do I look at a uh, student's progress and is this the most accurate? So we're going to try to be a little bit more purposeful this year and I'm going to send you, I'll push out to the parents by email, a progress report for each of their children um, in each of our classes, uh, once in mid to late November, once in mid-December, and once about a week before the end of the semester in January. Let's talk with the teachers in our departments. They'll tell you whether they have a content-based scale or a skills-based scale, and they'll explain how students can have multiple opportunities in their courses uh, to demonstrate their learning as they go forward through the semester. Oh, hi there. I'm guessing you're wanting to hear about the multiple opportunities and SRG practices for the social sciences department. You're in luck. Here to talk to you about that is our distinguished, brilliant, and fabulous department chair, Ms. Canada Snyder. Hello, my name is Canada Snyder and I am the social science department chair at Central Academy and I am here to talk to you about how SRG works in our department. 
So first and foremost, the majority of our topics are skill-based topics. We have a few content-based topics, particularly in the eighth grade U.S. government high school credit class, but for the most part, they are skill-based. So what that means is because they are skill-based, they are skills that we work on throughout first semester and second semester, so basically the entire year. So they will be things like chronological reasoning, comparison and contextualization, historical source interpretation. And then depending on the class your student is taking, the actual content is the vehicle for those skills. So whether that be US history, or whether that be world history or a European history. It's, so just again, for the skill-based targets, we will repeatedly utilize those skills throughout the year. For the content-based targets, particularly in the eighth grade, um, if students would like to have another opportunity or multiple opportunities, they would need to speak with their individual teacher. The teacher and the student will work together on creating what would be the best way to demonstrate that that student has achieved that content um, in that particular class. Additionally, in infant campus, you will not see twos, threes, and fours. We are using the lettering system. So for example, an ET would stand for exceeding the target, an AT would be considered at the target or proficient, and then a PT means we are progressing towards the target. So that is what you will see for our individual learning targets um, in each of our topics. The only numbers that you will see will be when we assign those topic scores. The topic scores will be assigned at minimum at nine weeks, so midterm, and then at the end of the semester. They could be assigned more often than that, but at minimum, uh, that is when you can see that collection of topic scores. So you will not see individual assignment scores that got us to those letters, the ET, the AT, the PT. So for the individual assignment scores, you will need to talk with your student about demonstrating to you what those individual assignment scores were. We will not put in a letter score such as ET, AT, or PT until we have assessed at least two um, assignments or they could be quizzes or they could be um, discussions or debates, but we need two bodies of evidence before we assign that letter score. Um, lastly, we have sent out a letter, particularly to students, and we have taken time in class to explain this process. So feel free to ask your students to explain it to you or feel free to ask your student for that particular letter that further explains um, how we do SRG and Central Academy Social Sciences. Thank you. Thank you, Canada. We really appreciate that. So I hope that you've learned a lot about our department's practices and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Okay, we're here to talk about multiple opportunities in the science department. Uh, in the science department, we are a content-based um, topic scale course. So what we learn at the beginning of the semester may be assessed at the beginning of the semester and not cycled back to necessarily at the end of the semester. Um, we will provide multiple opportunities in the original unit of study. We will make sure that we're planning for at least two opportunities for you to assess and show your evidence of learning. After that unit is done, you need to check with your teacher for deadlines for reassessing or providing new additional evidence of your learning. Through that process, you'll reflect a little bit on your past learning. You'll show evidence of new learning. This is student initiated. You will talk to your teacher and set this up before the deadline. After that reflection and evidence of new learning, you'll chat with your teacher and you'll talk about what that new assessment may look like. That new assessment could be a lab, it could be another test, it could be a quiz, it could be a conversation, it could just be over one single target, it could be over multiple targets. But in the end, it's an opportunity for you to show additional evidence. There are deadlines with those, double check with your teacher, double check on the reassessment process, it's student initiated, make sure you're taking care of the things that you need, don't wait until the last minute. If you have any questions, stop and see a science teacher. One. Welcome, Welcome to, to 
Central Academy English. English at Central Academy has five skills-based topics that repeat each year. Students have multiple opportunities throughout the semester to demonstrate their mastery of a topic. If a student gets a score that they're not happy with, they'll have another chance on another assignment to show their mastery. In this way, we do not encourage redos, but rather multiple opportunities to demonstrate mastery. Each assignment counts to show a student's progress in the target, whether it's formally assessed and scored, or whether it's merely marked to show how they're progressing towards that target or goal. It's very important for students to complete each assignment and to do their best because the complexity of the assignments increases over the course of the semester and the school year. We encourage students to be advocates for themselves at Central Academy. For example, if a student does not receive the desired target on an assignment, we encourage him or her to go speak with the teacher and also pay attention to feedbacks and comments given by teachers to improve upon the next assignment. I'm Mike Marchetti. Hi, I'm Michael Link. Math is unique. We have both content and skills-based topics. We offer multiple opportunities or assessments, both formal and informal, where students can demonstrate their learning regarding a topic. As a parent, a couple things that are probably especially helpful for you are that one, homework problems provide valuable informal feedback for both the teacher and the student, and two, that it takes several weeks to complete the work and collect evidence within a given topic. We've crafted these opportunities purposefully and carefully to align with the fact that we both have an accelerated compacted curriculum and that we also value students being able to have multiple chances to learn and to share their learning with us. In math, content would be like the common core standard for a course such as algebra or geometry or calculus whereas the skills would be the common core standards for mathematical practice. Thank you for sending your child to our math courses. I'm Mrs. Green. I teach beginning, intermediate, and advanced throwing here at Central Academy. Our throwing classes are content-based and sequential. There are multiple opportunities for students to master the skills in each project based on continual feedback. Okay, so I want to explain this a little bit more clearly because I think it's kind of confusing. So on our scales, the number three, or the, the goal, the three is where we want students to get, it states that multiple ways. So in order to reach multiple ways, the students have to learn this, and this, and this, and this. Which means, don't freak out now, which means that for each project, they're living at a two, right? So they have to learn how to do this, to do this, to do this, so that we can count the multiple ways out of three. So students and parents, um, your body of evidence for the semester is gonna, is gonna live at a two. But then at the end of the, the, the grading period, I will look at those twos and say, okay, yes, they learned how to do this, 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 and this. Now the topic score can reach a three. All right, so I also wanna explain something um, that's a little different in throwing. So students will have a project. Let's say the first project is to make a cylinder. They make that cylinder and it's not quite where it needs to be yet. They, they haven't quite mastered those skills. So what happens is we all move on to the next project, but this student still has opportunities if they take them to continue to work on that cylinder, 
while they're also learning how to throw a bowl. And then at which point they can meet back with me, I will reassess a new cylinder, showing those skills. Not everybody is gonna learn at the same rate, at the same speed. So it might take a student um, a couple weeks longer or a month longer to learn how to do this. Um, so we continue to give opportunities um, up until semester. Hi, I'm Mrs. Johnson. I teach art history here at Central Academy. My courses are intro, intermediate, and AP. My courses are content and sequential based. Students have multiple opportunities to master content based upon continual feedback within class. Uh, Central Academy World Language Department consists of seven languages. I'm Kim Glandorf and I teach German. I'm Rachel Lenz, I teach Japanese. I'm Beth Eilers, I teach French. I'm Abir, I teach Arabic. I'm Yu Jiahua, I teach Chinese. I am Giovanni Leo, I teach Italian. And Lindsay Frederigels uh, teaches Spanish. World Languages uses skills-based scales for levels one through AP. We assess six topics. Those topics are presentational writing, along with interpersonal writing, presentational speaking, along with interpersonal speaking, reading, and listening. Except for Japanese, uh, we have one additional scale uh, topic in order to accommodate the fact that we use multiple writing systems. Uh, world languages provide multiple opportunities throughout the semester. Uh, because we are skills-based rather than content-based, we actually assess the exact same um, targets over and over again across the semester. So if a student doesn't perform as well on, say, the lesson one assessment as they wanted to, um, they would be able to be reassessed on those same skills in lesson two and lesson three and so on throughout the semester. So um, we don't really need a separate cycle two. We don't need retakes because the ability to reassess is built into the fabric of the course. Now, there are extraordinary circumstances that might warrant a retake, in which case it is up to the student to take initiative to come speak to us in order to engage that cycle. In world languages, we're new to the SRG and these topics and scales, so it's definitely a work in progress, and not every single um, language has SRG throughout through one through four. We're, we're getting there, but we're just not quite there as of yet. Um, and just to give you a few skills that you need in order to be successful in the world language department, um, or in any world language, it, it would be to have really good attendance. Um, we do new activities every single time that we meet, so attendance is extremely important. Uh, another thing, whether you're comfortable with it or not, is participation. Um, learning a new language, you're going to have mistakes, so go with it, um, and make sure that you complete all of the practices. And we would just like to thank you um, for watching this a little informational piece about the World Language Department. And please reach out to us if you have any questions.